here's a scenario. You finally open your Bible, even though it's been weeks or maybe months since you've read it. So you're already feeling a little bit guilty going in. But you push through and you start to read. You get about two sentences in and you notice that your mind has begun to wander. Refocus, you tell yourself. Let's just start over and reread the same two sentences. Suddenly your phone is buzzing and you think, oh, I forgot to turn off my notifications. So you go do that quickly. And then you think, let's just start again. Attempt number three. And now you're thinking, what does this even mean? I don't understand any of this. Raise your hand if this scenario sounds familiar. Don't worry, no one can see you. Raise your hand. If you're not raising your hand, you're lying. I know you've been there and you're a Christian. You're not supposed to lie. Come on, shame on you. Only kidding. But really, this is a real scenario and it's really frustrating when we claim to be Christians but we don't understand the words that we're reading. I've been there and I'm still there. Oftentimes I find myself reading a passage of scripture totally blank and not understanding what it means. And to be honest with you, I think that part of this comes from the fact that I don't think that we ever really learned how to learn from the Bible. Sure, Sunday school was great. The stories are wonderful and they stuck with us and the songs will always be stuck in our heads. But once we graduated from that level of understanding, what else is out there? Sure, there's great, great pastors and sermons and books, but to be honest with you, all of those things are secondhand knowledge. The only true original source of the Word of God is the Word of God, and we need to spend more time in the actual Word. For those of you who don't know, my name is Kirsten Elsa, and I absolutely love seeing Christians take hold of the faith that they claim and watching it completely transform their life. And that's why I'm here today. I actually have a tip that I'm going to offer you for the next time that you feel stuck when you're reading your Bible and you feel like you're not getting anything out of it. See, I believe that the, the Bible is the Word of God, which means that every single word in His Word is one of His words. So each one is placed there for a specific reason. There's something that we can get out of every single word within the Bible. So here's the tip that I want to share with you today. When you're stuck on a sentence and you've read it three or four times in a row and you're still not getting anything out of it, I want you to read that sentence over and over and over the number of times for how many words are in that sentence. And each time you read the sentence, emphasize the next word. It'll change the meaning of the sentence. Well, it won't change the meaning of the sentence. It'll still mean the same thing, but it'll hit you a little differently as you emphasize each individual word and how that word impacts the larger sentence. So let me just give you an example so that you can kind of see how it works. I'm going to read from Psalm chapter 18 and I'm going to read verse 19. I'm going to read the second half of verse 19 because it's something that has really stuck with me. I think it's such a powerful statement. So the whole verse 19 says, he brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. So I'm just gonna take that second half. He rescued me because he delighted in me. So let's break that down and use this tip to see how it would work. So I'm going to emphasize a different word each time that I read it. He rescued me because he delighted in me. He did that. So who is he? It is God. Imagine everything that the word he means. He did that. Read, reading number two. He rescued me because he delighted in me. That's what he did, he rescued me. It's not a passive thing, it's a very active thing, it's a very uh, large thing, he rescued me. Everything that that word means, it means that I needed help, that I was lost, that he went out of his way, he rescued me. Third reading, he rescued me. He rescued me because he delighted in me. If that doesn't hit you, you guys, to think of who it is that's doing the rescuing and that he did it for you. Reading number four, he rescued me because he delighted in me. He didn't do this willy-nilly. He had a purpose and a reason. He rescued me because he delighted in me. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Not someone else on this earth, not someone else that we love. He delighted in me. And here's the kicker, you guys. He rescued me because he delighted in me. 
he didn't rescue me because he felt obligated, just because he's God and he has to love everyone. He rescued me because he delighted in me. And he rescued you because he delighted in you. So you get the idea. You, you read the scripture the number of times for the number of words in the sentence, and you put an emphasis on a different word each time, and you watch it change the meaning of that entire passage. It's just such a powerful tip, and it's something that I learned a while ago that has really helped me dig into the word and get more out of it. Because I'll, I'll admit, I think it's really frustrating sometimes when people have so much knowledge and so much understanding of the Bible that I just don't have. And I'm thinking, how do they get so much out of it when I can't even form one simple thought about this one sentence in the Bible? And that's a really easy way to do it, just to sit down and break down the Word of God into the words of God and what they actually mean for you. So what I would love for you guys to do, I'd love for you to test out this theory. Maybe the next time that you get stuck, Give it a try and let me know how it goes. I'd love to hear how God is revealing himself more to you uh, and using this process. And if you want more tips and more encouragement and more um, help along your faith journey, I would encourage you to visit my website and you can sign up for a weekly email that I send out to a bunch of people to encourage us together on our journey and our faith with the Lord. So you can find that at kirstenelsa.com. That's the tip that I have for you guys today. Thanks so much for tuning in and God bless.